psychological story of decision making doesn't end, however, when a decision has been made. The act of making a decision can trigger a flood of other processes. According to psychologist Leon Festinger, whenever we choose to do something that conflicts with our prior beliefs, feelings, or values, a state of cognitive dissonance is created in us. A tension between what we think and what we do. When this tension makes us uncomfortable enough, we're motivated to reduce it in a number of ways. We may change the way we think about the decision, or try to change how others think about it so that they can support our decision. Or we may change some aspect of our behavior so that our decision seems more in character with us. In other words, we try to reduce the dissonance between how we think we should act and how we actually act by changing one or the other. In the mid-50s, Leon Festinger and his colleague Merrill Carl Smith conducted a classic experiment in which students were engaged in very boring tasks. The students were then given a request by one of Festinger's staff. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let me tell you now what we're actually studying here. It's the effect of preparatory mental set on performance. The rest of the subjects are prepared by being told that the experiment will be very interesting and enjoyable. In fact, lots of fun. Uh, now I have a somewhat unusual request to make of you. Uh, the next subject is waiting right outside, but the fellow who ordinarily gives the spiel uh, isn't here. Uh, I wonder if you could possibly take his place. As a matter of fact, we figure we'll be needing someone in the future, so I'd like to offer you a $20 retainer and have you remain on call for us. Uh, would that be all right? $20? That'd be fine. Half the students were randomly assigned to the group that received $20 for lying that the experiment was fun. The other half were given only $1 for lying. Dollar as a sort of a retainer and have you remain on call with us. Uh, would that be all right with you? Yes, that'll be all right. The cognitive dissonance came from the knowledge that the experiment was in fact boring and $1 was insufficient reward for lying. Many of the $1 subjects actually convinced themselves that the experiment was fun after they made their decision to reduce the dissonance between their prior beliefs and their behavior. They came to believe a big lie for a small incentive. To a girlfriend of mine who participated in an experiment last week and she said it was very tedious. Oh, I don't think that was the same experiment because this one wasn't boring at all. I didn't think so. The $20 subjects, on the other hand, felt no dissonance because they felt comfortable in lying just for the money. He said it was pretty miserable and that I should do everything I could to uh, get out of it. Well, I think maybe your friend was wrong. Perhaps it's a different experiment because this was a lot of fun. It, it appeared to me as if, a, for, as if it were a puzzle. We you know, had to turn these knobs and I tried to figure out what we were doing it for, but I really couldn't figure it out. Perhaps you'll have better luck. Other theories might predict that the man who was paid most would have the highest motivation for enthusing over the dull task and would be most sold on it himself. Cognitive dissonance theory leads to an exactly opposite prediction. The man who is paid $20 knows that the task is dull, but he also knows that he had sufficient justification for saying that it wasn't. Did you enjoy working on the manual test? Well, it uh, really wasn't too enjoyable. In fact, it was rather boring. How about the man who is paid one dollar? He knows the task is dull, but he has two discrepant thoughts. He also knows that he did not have sufficient justification for saying that it wasn't. For him, there is dissonance. Time after time, we have seen what follows. He reduces the dissonance by changing his opinion about the dullness of the task. Did you enjoy working on the manual task? Yes, I enjoyed it. Would you like to participate in such an experiment again? Yes, I think I would like to. Anytime there is insufficient reward, there will be dissonance. The general principle seems to be that people come to believe in and to love the things they have to suffer for. By discovering how people actually behave, and not how some theory says they ought to behave, psychology can provide guidelines to help us catch ourselves before we go astray, or redirect us once we do, if we follow them.